Okay, so we've got some questions on the past and peace and reconciliation that people had. The Attorney General suggested drawing a line under the past. And many young people say they're fed up with the amount of money spent on this issue. Is it time to move on, and if so, how? Well, I think you have to remember uh, that the people of Northern Ireland were put through a horrendous campaign of terrorism uh, in which many thousand people suffered themselves or the loss of immediate family members. Uh, so it would be wrong to say to those people, forget about that. Your grief doesn't matter. Your loss doesn't matter. The process is more important. And that has been the problem in Northern Ireland. The, the contrived political process has trumped the issues that are relevant to victims. Victims have almost become an embarrassment because they keep raising awkward questions like, when is someone going to be made accountable for the murder of my father? Uh, why are those who murdered my father now sitting in my government? So they do raise embarrassing, difficult questions. And people do trump their interests by saying, ah, but the process is more important. It's not. Justice, it cannot be diluted. It cannot be sacrificed. And there's no sell-by date on justice. And there can be no no-go area for the pursuit of justice, even within government. Uh, and so therefore, I do hold to the fact that justice is sacrosanct in that regard. So a specific one following that is, do you support the Lord Chief Justice plan for the 54 Troubles Legacy Inquest to be held within a five-year time frame? Only if we can have a similar time frame uh, for the multiple hundreds of unsolved murders uh, inflicted by terrorism. I am utterly against uh, prioritising, creating a hierarchy where we put the state under the spotlight but give a Bible, such as was given in OTR letters and pardons, to the perpetrators of terrorism. So I think uh, the Lord Chief Justice, it's what he's been asked to do, but I think it's a wrong direction. And you know, the, in the Stormont House Agreement, they set aside uh, huge amounts of money for legacy inquests, and only a fraction of it for the HIU, which is supposed to investigate uh, historic crimes. So it's the lack of kilter and the imbalance, which is the problem here. Do you think reconciliation can be achieved here? And if so, how? Well, reconciliation, I think, it's, it, there are parallels with how uh, people are reconciled, how man is reconciled to God. And a key component in that that nobody wants to talk about in respect of reconciliation within this community is repentance. I don't think you can have true reconciliation unless those who inflicted what they inflicted come to the point of recognising that that was wrong and that they're sorry for it and say sorry, rather than glorifying it. And yet the tragedy is that we've had those in government who have continued to glorify the base, horrendous terrorism of the IRA. I see no sign of contrition. I see no sign of repentance. And without that, I see no prospect of really genuine reconciliation. Is the Good Friday Agreement still fit for purpose, or is it time for a new agreement? It never was fit for purpose because it was it that corrupted both the judicial process by opening the doors to murderers and letting them out having served maybe as little as two years when they should have been serving 25 years to pay for society for their crimes. It was it which corrupted our political process by creating a structure whereby it's not the people who decide whether who's in government, it's the parties uh, by creating the monster of mandatory coalition which hasn't worked. And you know, how many crises do we have to go on having before the penny finally drops that this system of government is never going to work? And one of the reasons it's never going to work is because Sinn Féin uh, uh, does not want, through Stormont or anything else, to make Northern Ireland work. And if you create a system which puts of necessity uh, and compulsion at the heart of government, a party that doesn't even want the country to work, then don't be surprised when the system implodes as it has yet again. So what is your party doing to challenge sectarianism and promote community relations? Well, I think sectarianism is wrong. I think uh, whatever someone's religious persuasion is, they are entitled in uh, the pursuit of civil and religious liberty to exercise it, and they should not be oppressed or suppressed in any way in that regard. Uh, and therefore, by seeking to uphold those principles, one seeks to uh, spread that message and that approach uh, but I think we do have to recognise that the system we, of government we have ensconces, institutionalises sectarianism 
because it's built on the mutual video videos of the two blocks and the electorate then seem to think oh we have to elect our side in case the other side uh, gets the upper hand and that institutionalizes sectarianism and that's a direct product of the Belfast Agreement and mandatory coalition and the mutual videos that were introduced and also of course from the foundation of the state be rather over generously and somewhat foolishly institutionalized sectarianism in education by deciding that instead of the state saying there'll be one state system the state will fund it if you want your own church system you fund it instead of doing that we ended up funding a state system and a church system and that is institutionalized sectarianism in education are you on twitter and if so do you run your own twitter account I do. Uh, the answer to, to that is yes on both accounts. I, I'm on Twitter. I'm quite active. And yes, I, I, I run my own.